Hello everyone, this is Venus Brown. I know I usually come to you with other content, but this week is going to be a little bit different. Monday was a very, very horrible day and my dog died. So I haven't felt up to doing most of the content and the stuff that I do during the week. So this week I'm just going to do this video and maybe I'll do a little bit of video editing, but that's going to be it for the week. Right now I'll just give a short breakdown of how I'm going to structure it. And then when I post the video, I will put some timestamps in there so that you'll know how to skip around if you want to skip parts. I'll start with just a brief description of what I usually do, and then I'll explain how this will be different this week. And then I'm gonna talk about what happened when Rusty passed away. And then I will talk about Rusty and a little bit about how it's been since he is not here with us anymore. Usually on Monday, Tuesday, I would be reading up on sources, planning my blog post, and writing a blog post. And then today, which is Wednesday, I would be planning and recording a video for my Digging Deeper post that would go along with my blog post. And if I had time, I might work on a reaction video such as The Crown, or This Is Gonna Hurt, or Handmaid's Tale. And then the rest of the week, I would just work on finishing any recordings that I hadn't done and doing the editing. But I have really not felt up to doing any of that this week. It's really been a lot harder than I anticipated. So this is like all I feel like I really should do because I've been having a hard time focusing and concentrating. I usually like working on things that involve a little bit of research, some thought, and I'm not there right now. Because of what happened, I'm not going to be doing a blog post this week. I'm going to do this video. I will post it on my Diverse Spectrums channel, on my Venus Brown channel, and on my Venus Plays Badly channel, just so that everybody knows what's going on and why I'm not posting any new content this week other than this. If I'm up to it and I'm feeling okay, then we'll try to get all of that done and edited and put on the channels. Then I might go ahead and do a reaction to The Crown. It really does depend on how I'm feeling. If not, I'll probably just be working on editing videos that doesn't require as much focus and organization and attention and planning. It's something that I can do as I go when I'm feeling up to it and I don't have to keep on. And if I lose focus, I can take a break from it and go do something else. So what happened on Monday, I mean, even before Monday, Rusty was 13 and a half. He was getting old and it was definitely getting more noticeable. He was getting slower and more achy and having a hard time with things that he never used to have a hard time with. But more recently, we started noticing some concerning behavioral changes with him being afraid to jump up and down off of things that, you sh that used to be okay with him walking funny to where it looked almost like he was drunk. Then we started noticing these times where he would do that thing where he looked like he was walking drunk and he'd fall over and it was like he wasn't in control of himself anymore. And he would either not move or he would just move and his feet would paddle back and forth a little bit, but he couldn't get up. It wouldn't last very long, a few seconds, but enough to be really, really concerning. And because he was 13 and a half, I figured he probably wasn't going to be with us for much longer. But we went ahead and called the vet after, I think, the second time that I saw this happen. And between the four of us that live here, we had seen it happen a few times. So I called the vet up schedule an appointment. I told them what was going on. They set up an appointment for that day. And we went in. Um, 
I, I told them that I wasn't sure if it was seizures or if it was little mini strokes or heart attacks or what. But everything that I found, opinion seemed to be that it was probably some sort of seizures, but there could be something else. They checked him over. They did some blood tests. Um, I sent in for a, a urine test later because they couldn't get enough pee. They did find a very low level heart murmur and they found some arthritis, which didn't surprise me at all. Um, arthritis in his back. They asked me a lot of questions about the kind of food that he's eating and if he's gotten a hold of anything that might have, uh, you know, that might be contributing to it if we've noticed changes after changing his food and things like that. But there's a whole bunch of things that can cause seizures, but sometimes it can be other health problems. So we ran the blood tests and the urine tests and um, most of that came back okay. Um, they got us set up on some seizure medicine. They told me about three different types, two of them that had less side effects than the other and one of them that was very, very inexpensive for the medicine, but then more expensive for the in-between checkups. Another one that was like a more of a mid-level cost um, monthly, but uh, but not near as much for checkups and stuff like that. And then another one that was higher level cost per month. I chose the one that costed a little bit more per month, but not as much for checkups frankly, was supposed to have less side effects. It was supposed to cause a little bit of drowsiness at the beginning, but that was supposed to taper off after a few days. After that visit and we got them on the medication, and there was a little bit of drowsiness at first, but it, it didn't really seem that different than he was before then. I myself only noticed one seizure after that. But my husband said that my brother-in-law had seen a couple seizures while he was outside. So it sounds like there were about three seizures that occurred after Rusty was on the medication. But it seemed to still be happening a lot less than it was before then. So those few times that we had seen him have seizures was in just, it was in just like a four or five day period. The time period after that where he had been on medication, it seems like there were about three seizures in a three-week period. But the last couple days, I definitely noticed he seemed a lot more lethargic, more so than he was when we first started him on the medication. A couple times when I was up really close to him, I couldn't tell if he was wheezing or whining. I know for myself what that sounds like, but for him it sounded a little bit like whining and a little bit like wheezing and I couldn't really tell. But I was definitely concerned that that even if he wasn't wheezing he was probably whining and, and he seemed like he really didn't feel very well. So the plan was to call the vet the next day, um, let them know what all has been going on to see if maybe he's having some later reactions to the medicine that didn't show up at first, or if something else was going on. I know the day before I had shaved him and showered him um, because he had a, his eye looked infected. Like maybe he had gotten in a fight with something or something else was causing his eye to be infected. After I finished shaving him and getting him washed, it was a little bit swollen but it didn't have all the gunkiness on him. And the next day, his eye looked much better and it didn't have any of that um, liquid or gunkiness or anything on it. But I thought maybe it's from that. Maybe he got in a fight with something. Maybe he got a hold of something in the yard that wasn't good for him. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was something like that or if it was this ongoing issues that he was having because he's getting older or if it was something from the medicine. I was cleaning up my room a little bit because I had spilled some food on the floor. It did get started a little bit later than I usually, usually I would be up getting breakfast around eight. I was out there around 11 instead. 
But around 1130, I think, I went to go and get the vacuum to vacuum up the floor. And I saw Rusty laying on the computer room floor, which is like right near the entry of our house. And he's been lying like this more often lately, I think just feeling more tired. That's where most of us have our computers set up, just not me. So I just call it the computer room. It's probably more like an entry room or sunroom or something like that. But anyway... He looked like he was panting and having more labored breathing. So as soon as I finished vacuuming, I was going to go ahead and call the vet, let them know what's going on, and and see if they can't fit me in for an appointment to have um, Rusty come in and, and get looked at, or, or if they think that this is like normal stuff. But as I was vacuuming, I, like I had barely started vacuuming, and my brother-in-law comes in and he's trying to talk to me, but I couldn't hear him. I had my hearing aid in, which I think was just amplifying the vacuum. So I couldn't hear what he was saying. And so I turned the vacuum off and he tells me that the dog's not moving. Like immediately my heart kind of drops and I'm like, oh crap. Because then I'm immediately thinking either, either he's dying or he's had another one of these seizures and it's, really bad or or a stroke or something I didn't know and I go in there and it's worse than the seizures he's not moving at all and his his head is sideways his tongue is sticking out he's got foam coming out of his mouth it seems like he's breathing and his heart's going a little teeny bit but it's like barely I can barely feel it I didn't know what to do I wasn't sure if he was dying, but I thought he probably was, but I wasn't sure. I've seen an animal after they're dead. I've seen an animal be right before they've died, but I don't think I've actually seen one die right there in front of me. And the same with people. I picked him up to try to see, can I feel his heartbeat? Can I feel his breathing? Um... And like I said, I could barely feel a heartbeat. It was really like barely there and barely any breathing. And foam is coming out of his mouth, but he starts twitching. So I know that sometimes after a person or an animal has died, that sometimes there's twitching. So I knew it might be him dead already or dying, but I wasn't sure. So... My youngest kid was there. I think we both knew that Rusty might not live much longer, but I asked my youngest kid to get my cell phone and to call the vet, but then they're so distraught that they're just crying. So I go ahead and I put the phone on speakerphone and I let them know what's going on. And the dog is still twitching every now and then, but He's expelled all this liquid, and the person on the phone tells me, well, they're going to have to go to an emergency vet because they don't have emergency services, Then we don't know if he is alive or dead or dying or whatever, so he's going to need to be checked. But I'm like, I don't know where any emergency services are. So I wait for him to give me the information. I write down the address and the phone number. I have my kid call up this place. And we go through the same process over again. They tell me that I should probably get a hold of the dog's regular vet and just see if they can just check to see if there's still a heartbeat, if he's still alive. I've already grabbed my stuff and hung up the phone, go out to the car, and I drive. And as I'm driving, I call up the other vet, I guess because it was too close to lunchtime. She couldn't find the doctors, and most of the doctors are probably on lunch right now. So she didn't know if I would even be able to be seen, so I decided to just go straight to the um, emergency hospital, which is going to take 20 minutes. Like, there's no real alternative. Probably about five minutes into the ride, it seemed like Rusty wasn't twitching anymore. He wasn't moving at all anymore. It felt like 
that might just be too traumatic to keep having my kid holding Rusty like that. Every time I asked my kid anything, it was, I don't know. And I know, I know, like, how does anybody know what to do in that situation? Or you don't necessarily even know how you feel in that situation. And so anything that I was asking, it wasn't really doing any good. So I finally just told them to hand me Rusty. And I held them the rest of the trip, but couldn't feel any more heartbeat. I couldn't feel any more breath. And I couldn't feel any more twitching or anything. So I figured that it was too late. But we decided to go to the vet anyway. And just to verify, I went ahead and called the emergency vet. And I let them know that I was coming and let them know that I think that Rusty had passed, but that we just wanted to come and verify. The whole time, I'm also trying to get a hold of my husband and let him know what's going on. And the Google thing on the car wasn't working right, so it wouldn't come up. So I had to go through this other method to try to make a phone call. It was really annoying. But I finally got a hold of my husband or at least left him a message because they don't have the phone in there in the office with them. They have to leave it. He did eventually call back. We got to the vet. They took him to the back. It wasn't too terribly much longer that she came back and said that he had passed. And they asked if I wanted them to take care of it or if I was going to bring him back home. And I asked my youngest kid, Taylin, what they wanted to do and they wanted to bring him back home. So they put him in a little... I think it was like a red pillowcase or something like that and put that in a cardboard box that is shaped like a coffin and they put a little heart up where his head was so that we knew what side his head was on and they didn't charge us anything for any of this and my husband called me back while I was on my way home and let me know that he was on his way home that was Monday. We tried to get a hold of my oldest kid to let them know. Um, I guess my husband had left him text, and I kept trying to text him, but he wasn't really responding to me. And I didn't know exactly how much my husband had said in his text, so I didn't know for sure if he knew everything. But then eventually he did send me a text that he had gotten Craig's text. I just didn't know exactly how much Craig had told him. So now I guess I'll tell you all a little more about Rusty. Rusty was, like I said, 13 and a half years old. We got Rusty when he was one. My kids were probably like six and eight or nine at the time. And now they're 18 and 21. Rusty is a little shih tzu. Here, I will um, start showing. I'll shrink my image and start showing pictures. This was probably right after we got Rusty. His full name is Rusty's Little Wiggle Tail. And we sometimes call him Fizzgig after the little fuzzy creature on the dark crystal because, because he's super fuzzy and he barks at everybody anytime they come to the door, anytime he hears anybody near our house or anything, he goes off and just starts barking like crazy, like Fizzgig from the Dark Crystal. And that's why we call him that. It just He just reminds us of that creature, or that little creature reminds us of Rusty. So we call, started calling him Fizzgig at some point, at least me and my oldest kid call him Fizzgig. A little shih tzu probably weighs like 10 pounds most of the time when you let his hair grow out it gets really really long and it doesn't take that long for it to grow but it was also a little harder for us to take care so a lot of times we would um, shave it so that it was much shorter I tried not to like shave him completely bald but and sometimes, because he had that long hair, we would do like different styles and stuff. Rusty does not like having his hair cut. He does not like getting baths. He does not like getting his claws trimmed. So sometimes it was difficult to get 
all of his hair shaved enough. So sometimes I would do things like I would shave his body and leave his head, uh, leave his legs. It's hard to get his legs because he does not like people messing with his legs. I think they're a little sensitive. So, and his feet and the closer you get to his feet and his little claws and stuff, the more upset he would get. Sometimes I would get his head shaved and his body shaved and parts of his legs, but he'd have like these little pads on his feet of just like furry, furry pads on his feet. Sometimes I would make like a little lion mane and shave the rest of him. I think there was even one time I shaved his head and left his body hair along. So it was like a reverse lion. That was weird. But we also have two kids and especially the oldest one love to dress him up. We did not dress him up a lot, but every once in a while, and he doesn't like initially getting the clothes put on him, but once they're on him, he's pretty much okay with it. Uh, as long as it's not a hat and as long as it's not socks or slippers or anything, you put socks or slippers on him, they are coming off. You put something on his head, it is coming off. But yeah, we have this little Christmas outfit. We had this little slicker, like a little raincoat. There's another one. We have the this Halloween one, skeleton. I don't have any pictures of the rest of them, but we have like a sweater and a jacket. We have like a sage green one that has a picture of a tree and... Um, and it says something about the tree being his potty or something like that. We have a Superman outfit. Um, I also had a little pride outfit, which I never got around to putting on him. It had like little rainbow striped leg warmers and a matching pride shirt. Every once in a while, we would dress him up in some little clothing. And like I said, he, he didn't like it being put on him initially But then once it was on him, it was okay. He has this little taco thing. So this is a costume of a taco. Rusty was very important to us, like all pets are to their owners. And he was with us for 12 years, 12 years of my kids' lives. So they really kind of grew up with him. So losing him is really, really hard for them. And it's been much harder for me than I thought it would be but even more so for them. My oldest kid, Ben, did finally get in touch with us. He didn't call, but he texted and let us know that he's been very upset and crying. And he's supposed to call me shortly, hopefully in the next hour or so. I told him that if I don't get a call from him in the next hour, I'm going to be calling him. So we'll see how that goes, but hopefully. But he did say he'd just been crying off and on the whole day. Rusty loved to beg for our food. The preferable thing would be for them, you know, if you want to give him some people food, go and take it to his dish and give it to him. But we've had five people living in the house at a time for quite a while and trying to get everybody on the same page was not really happening. So some people were feeding him whenever, some people were feeding him whatever. So he would stand in the kitchen with his little puppy dog eyes looking at you like, no, he wouldn't say anything. He would stand there very quietly, not make a noise and not move. And usually one of us would eventually drop him a little bite of this or a little bite of that. Well, we were making food that somebody might drop something. And then I am a particularly messy eater. So he knew that if I'm eating, I am likely to eventually drop something. Or he would go and wait over by Craig because Craig was more likely to intentionally feed him. Whenever we would go out, Rusty didn't like us being gone. Rusty, I think, was definitely one of those dogs who probably had some anxiety anytime we would leave. Zach, my brother-in-law, would be here with with him while I would go to work or I would take the kids to school or whatever and while Craig was at work and and he would tell us he'd just stay there at the door waiting until we come home and then as soon as we come home 
He is spinning and barking. He's so excited. And even if Zach wasn't home, you know, this was our greeting. Every time we got home, we had to unlock the door. The whole time we're trying to get the keys in the door to get it unlocked, he is barking up a storm waiting for us to come in. And then as soon as we open the door, he's spinning around doing little circles, just excited as heck. Rusty liked to go outside every time anyone went outside. My brother-in-law, Zach, goes outside a lot to smoke. And um, every single time Zach would go out, he'd go out. But he also wouldn't usually stay out very long. He'd go out, do his little thing, and then he'd turn around and go back in. But then if somebody else goes out afterwards, then he's going back out with them. So it was like every time anyone went outside, He's following back out with them. But then he'd turn around afterwards and want to come right back in. So this was a frequent thing. In and out with him. In and out. In and out. Always wants to go outside if somebody's outside. Um, sometimes he would tell us when he had to go to the bathroom. Sometimes he wouldn't. There were times that he would look straight at me and lift up a leg and start peeing. It wasn't even that long ago. I was in my bathroom and he's looking straight at me and I'm telling him, Rusty, no, no, no. And I'm like, I can't get you right now. And when I tell him, no, 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 he goes and walks around the corner so that I don't see him. He freaking peed right there. Of course, you know, you're going to try to get him and get him out of there as quickly as you can, but... Sometimes you're occupied and you can't get to him in time. Or sometimes he'll pee a little bit and then we'll get him outside. And then sometimes we're not around. We'd try to take him out before we leave and he'd either just go a little bit or he wouldn't go. And then after we leave, he'd go and that was Rusty. This picture was during one of our Christmases. In fact, there is a box up by his head that is one of the Christmas presents from that year. Rusty liked to sit up on the couch on the lazy boy between Craig's legs like he is there. He also liked to sit right under my feet. Rusty's favorite place was to be under my feet as much as possible. If I was walking around under my feet, like as close to my feet as possible, trying to trip me up the whole time. And if I'm sitting on the couch, right down underneath my feet. So that way, if I put my leg down, it brushes up against him. He's like snapping at my feet. Or if I try to get up and it brushes up against him, he's snapping at my feet. Especially as he got older, he was uh, getting a lot more cranky and a lot more snappy. Rusty had this song. I still don't know to this day if he liked the song or if the song just drove him absolutely batty. Anytime Who Let the Dogs Out came on, he would go crazy, just barking and barking and howling. So like I said, I don't know if he like really, really liked it or was excited by it or if it drove him absolutely crazy. We always got this incredible reaction whenever that song was playing. And it, was, it had to be that song. It couldn't be like some other version of that song. It couldn't be somebody else singing the song. It couldn't be some other dogs barking and going crazy. It was like that song, the way that song was, it would just like make him go off every time. It was hilarious. This is from one of my shorts that I did actually for Rusty. I was doing shorts of him for a little while. Like I said, he does not like getting baths. He does not like having his claws trimmed and he does not like getting shaved. But once I start giving him a bath, it's not like he's trying to get away. If I'm shaving him, he'll try to get away. He'll snap at me and stuff like that. But when I'm bathing him, no, it's more like he's totally stressed out. He shakes and if you try to back away, he might try to get out. But for the most part, he's okay. He just doesn't like it. You can tell that he does not like those baths. But... You know, every once in a while, he's got to get a bath because sometimes he's stinky. Sometimes he gets grass seeds all over him. And of course, he's a dog. He does need to be cleaned up every now and then. This was actually from the day before he died. This was actually 
right after I had shaved him and showered him. My youngest kid, Taylin, I had them help me so that they could see, you know, what you have to do to get the dog bathed so they could be a part of that. And like I said, Rusty did not like baths. So usually this was this was a regular thing. After we would give him a bath, we would dry him off with a towel and then let him go. And then he would go and run under Craig's chair, which this is where he is. He's under Craig's chair, bacon, not wanting to come out. But that was his everyday thing. So I didn't think a lot of it when I took this picture. He was like this because this is how he usually is after he gets bathed. It's weird because Rusty really loved me. Rusty wanted my attention. Rusty's always under my feet. But Rusty also knows that I'm the one that showers him and he doesn't like showers. I'm the one that shaves him and he doesn't like being shaved. I'm the one that clips his claws when his claws get clipped, which isn't very often. It was like he's upset with me and angry with me, so he's going to go run away from me and run under Craig's chair. Most of the time, he's like right under my feet. I did notice, though, that when I was shaving him this time, he really wasn't fighting with me nearly as much as he usually does. Um, this was the same day after him getting a shower and him drying off and everything. Since then, it's like there's these waves of grief. Sometimes I feel like I'm fine. Or not fine, but like okay, considering the situation. Then all of a sudden, like, just some random thing will get me really sad and emotional. I'll see his dog dish or I'll walk in the room expecting to see him or like when I woke up this morning it's eight o'clock it's time for me to go out there to give him his medicine but nope he's not there anymore so there's nobody to give medicine to walk in the door and you're expecting to hear that barking and seeing that fuzzy little rusty spinning around all excited it's not there anymore and so and so you just have these waves waves of emotion and then like Tuesday the day after he died that was Independence Day and we were gonna go out but I don't know around 3 30 or 4 it started really storming and uh, so we had to turn off the TV and computers and stuff. So I suggested we play Cards Against Humanity. You know, I figured it's something that maybe could cheer us up a little bit. And it, maybe it did, but, but it, you know, I just really wasn't feeling it. So <sighs> by the time around 5 o'clock rolled around, which was when I was originally planning for us to leave, to go get some food and then after we ate we were going to go over to one of the parks in Coco to watch the Brevard Symphony Orchestra and then watch fireworks. But by the time five o'clock rolled around I really wasn't feeling it. I was just not up to it. I didn't really feel like going anywhere. I was like well should I start making dinner and Craig's like well I thought we were going to go out. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but I don't, I don't think I really want to do the fireworks thing. Just did a movie, and I'm like, well, I guess we could do a movie, you know, maybe, because um, he was talking about Indiana Jones, and I was like, maybe, you know, that'll, um, that might feel a little bit better than this. So I suggested we wait till the seven o'clock showing, and uh, we get you know we get dinner before then but at the time i was thinking we just do something quick pick something up and then go to the movies um and around six o'clock i said well maybe we should be uh get we should probably get going get some food and he's like well if we leave now we're not gonna have time to do the movie and i'm like it's six i'm like if we he's like oh but i wanted to do smoky bones so i was like well we could do it after 
when all was said and done, we decided instead of doing the movies, we would just go to Smoky Bones and then come home. Even that, like the whole time, it's like, there's just this, like, emptiness. There's this freaking hole. It's been, I have been doing a lot of, like, housework that I usually hate doing. I don't like, I do not like housework. I usually will do what really needs to be done when it really needs to be done but I but I do not have a spick and span house because I don't care for that stuff you know we try to make sure that somebody is filling the dishwasher every now and then that somebody is emptying the dishwasher um that the floor gets swept and mopped every once in a blue moon that the floor gets vacuumed every once in a blue moon but it's not something that I usually spend much time on it's not something that any of us spend much time on because we don't really like doing that stuff since Rusty passed away I have I have been vacuuming, I've been folding clothes and putting them away, I've been sweeping the floor and and doing all this other stuff and working out in the yard and because it's like stuff that I can do without having to really think about it. I'm so off, my mind is like nowhere and so I'll do something and then I'll just kind of like I'm in this daze half an hour later and I still haven't gotten a freaking pot of coffee started. Not even that I'm getting distracted by everything. It's that I am losing focus on what I'm doing as I'm doing it and not even paying attention to something else necessarily. That's a lot of what's been happening. I um, I spilled some food and thought to like whistle for Rusty, and then realize he's not there. Monday, said a few words for Rusty, buried the, my youngest, Talon. After graduation, I had gotten a bouquet of white carnations, I think it was. They'd actually been taking care of it this whole time. They have like three flowers that were left alive. But that day, I had just seen them clearing out what was left of the dead flowers and trimming up the little the three that were left and tending to the water like there was something that they really took care of Craig noticed that Talon had taken the three flowers that were left and put them on Rusty's grave maybe it would be a good idea to get real flowers and let them plant those on the grave something that will stay there like in memory of Rusty and and I thought that was a great idea and I thought that 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 will give Talon something to occupy them a little bit and to keep tending and taking care of and that will you know be a, a a more maybe a pleasant reminder something that they can go back to and so I talked to Talon and they liked that. So I had them pick out some flowers that they thought they might like. And we actually, um, we went to Home Depot and Lowe's. We ended up getting uh, a hibiscus plant that was already a, a kind of one of the smaller ones that's not like big and large yet. But I think it's supposed to get up to a couple feet high eventually. We got that to go in a little area in our front yard that's bare between bushes where it's bare. We've got um, some echinacea seeds and we got some, I think they're called blanket flowers. And they also wanted something called butterfly pea flowers. And we didn't find any of them at the store, so I found some online I let them select between what ones they want and they pick those out so those will be coming eventually we're going to be planting the seeds over on Rusty's grave pretty soon so what we'll initially do is plant just a little bit of them right there where Rusty's grave is but then eventually I will go ahead and um Turn that soil that is around the grave 
make a bigger area because there's a lot of seeds. We could put flowers in more of that area. Then eventually Ben is supposed to be coming to visit and we'll have that there. These pretty flowers to remember him by. That's going to be it for now. Bye.